Hi there, and welcome to this lesson. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you to get the most of your desired results when negotiating online. For most procurement managers, face-to-face -face negotiations are the preferred mode of negotiating. But since this is not always possible, since COVID-19 changed the way we work, most companies work hybrid or remote now. To help you out, the team of procurement tactics came up with some guidelines when negotiating via phone, Zoom, Microsoft Teams or any other digital way. When negotiating online, should you adapt your negotiation style? The answer is yes. COVID-19 is influencing the way we close deals. The outdated rule that suggests that procurement managers are more likely to maximize their opportunities in face-to-face -face negotiations? Forget it. We'll start this lesson with tips on how to negotiate via video calls and continue with negotiations via email. If you're negotiating in a video call, you have to focus on many details. The first tip is to prepare a script and use it. A good online negotiation starts with the preparation of a script. Make sure you include the following tips. Keep it quick and short. Account managers talk, procurement managers are the ones that ask the questions. Start the script with your wanted outcome, write your text afterwards. Always start your sentence with important information and begin with the end in mind. Be conversational, know who you're dealing with and finish strong. The second tip is to make sure you plan the right timing and duration of the session and use this to your advantage. Time is a valuable variable in every negotiation. Try to determine if the person or company you are negotiating with is more or less eager for a deal than you. Is the answer more eager? Slower your speed of response. If the other way around, faster your speed of response. The third is to prepare flinches and make sure you use them during your sessions. The flinch is one of the oldest negotiation tactics. A flinch is a bit dramatic, visible reaction during negotiations. The objective of a flinch is to make people feel uncomfortable about the offer they just presented. Here's an example of how it works. Examples are, is this really what you want to offer? Please act as shocked and surprised as possible. Feel uncomfortable with the concept of flinching? Try and find out the great possible results yourself. The fourth is to make sure you use silence. This has even a bigger impact online. Silence is a great tactic to diffuse emotion and people with a temper. Generally, people are uncomfortable with silence. People feel they have to fill it and usually what they fill it with weakens their position. Use this knowledge to your advantage in negotiations. Most people can stand silence and are the first to fill it, very often with a concession. Silence also allows you thinking time enables you to gain or regain position and puts pressure on the other party. I learned in the last few years that people tend to send slightly different slides after a session, driven by feedback that they received during presenting them. If you see something interesting while someone else is presenting online, don't hesitate to make a screenshot and add this to your notes. So make screenshots when slides are presented by the other party because these will help your notes become more visual. When negotiating together or in a team, make sure you have a contact line open. Having a contact line open during the online negotiation helps you to achieve your goal easier. Via WhatsApp or chat, you can easily discuss short topics, make in-negotiation decisions and, for example, determine who plays the bad cup and who plays good cup. If you are negotiating via email, you have to pay attention to the following. Email is perfect for one-way communication. One-way communication flows from a sender to a receiver, but nothing comes directly back in return. Since COVID-19 influences negotiations around the globe, it became common to share proposals via email to set up a video call to discuss it afterwards. It is difficult to build a relationship via email. Words can easily be misunderstood by the reader. Make sure you keep the climate positive when emailing back and forth. Of course, your message to achieve your financial goals should land, but try to keep a friendly tone in emails. Try to be clear as possible from the start. 
and remember to use generally accepted best practices in emo etiquettes. Never forget the personal touch. Share something personal. It's easy to find common ground when everyone looks for it. Examples include references to weather, sports, animal, children and or travel. More time to choose words carefully is an advantage. This can make your proposal look stronger. The same that applies to the preparation phase of negotiation accounts for emailing. The more time you put in your proposal, the better. But be cautious. Never lose yourself in persuading the other. Keep it businesslike. Business professionals use email during the total negotiation and decision making process. But there's no turning back. While most negotiators recognize that email is less successful or more frustrating in certain situations, they all use it. Always think before you send the email. Is this information sensitive if the receiver forwards it to another person? If the answer is yes, don't send it, just give them a call. We could not be more clear. Always check all your attachments by reopening them before sending. The examples of sent emails containing sensitive information are endless. That's it for this lesson. 